is it actually compiles a database and roster of Greens who are running for office around the country, uh, Greens who are running around the country and, and our office holders, and it provides a central place to find that information. I'm going to present to you about how the database works, what my job is as elections database manager, um, and uh, answer your questions. And specifically, I am operating under a job description and memorandum of understanding with the National Party until late 2023. And I am responsible for uh, entering data, for developing the capabilities of the database to report on that data, and to provide an owner's manual for the National Party and how to run the database so that it's not all dependent upon me. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat as you think of them, and we will come to them. Um, if they are simply a clarification of something that I'm talking about, um, go ahead and um, uh, try and ask the question. Um, if there's something I'm simply not clear about, if it's more of a general discussion point, please hold it and we'll, we'll make some pauses. And I will ask our um, folks, I think it's Gloria uh, from New York, to keep an eye on the chat to um, see if there's something uh, clarifying because I may not see everything in the chat. Uh, how do I get rid of this? Where did that just come from? How do I get rid of this? <sighs> chat, okay, I don't need that there. Okay, so we're gonna start here from the home page. And when you go to gpelections.org, this is what you see. And this first, um, explanation here is important. This is a database of all Green Party members who have run for public office in the United States since the first Greens began running in 1985, according to a particular definition of a Green Party candidate, which we will go to in a second. And then candidates are entered here once they have qualified for the ballot. And I'll go into why in a moment, but as you see, click each candidate's name down below. For more information about that race, there's this search function in, in here where you can put in anybody's name to look for them. Um, here you can search by year, and here you can search by types of office and find all the Greens who ran for those types of offices. Furthermore, here it says candidates not entered in the database who may have declared for office but not yet qualified for the ballot may be found on individual state party sites and on this candidate news feed. The database includes only candidates once they have gotten on the ballot because until they get on the ballot, they're not on the ballot. And each election cycle, we have many people who say they're running, who try and qualify and who don't qualify for the ballot. And this database serves the role of a clear objective place to say, these are the X number of people who we know are on the ballot, who we know are going to be candidates and running uh, no matter what um, for the rest of the year. But we do link to this other news feed, which serves a different role in the party for um, starting to cover people who say back in March, hey, I'm gonna run in November and ballot qualification is until August, but here's my campaign. So um, this definition here, um, is a definition that tries to serve the following purpose, that we have 50 different states with different uh, histories, different ballot access laws, different green parties that have different levels of organizations. Some have full major party status, some have minor party status, some, ha some have political organization status, et cetera. And we want to be able to be comparing apples to apples. So this definition is a definition that I originally came up with. So I've been tracking Greens running for office for us since 1994. And the first elections database uh, started in 2000. And between 2000 and 2002, I did a massive amount of research and used this de definition, which when the GPUS got um, founded, it incorporated this database as its own and the definition. What we're trying to say somebody here is basically this. 
a Green Party candidate or office holder or somebody who's a member of the Green Party in that state, but is not a member of another political party. And what we mean by not as a member of another political party is not a member of another ballot qualified party. So they can't be a Green and a Democrat or a Green and a Republican. Could they be a socialist when the socialist isn't party isn't on the ballot? Sure. The, you know, the whatever party, sure. But if, but once um, the green, another party is on the ballot, you can't be both a green and another party that's on a ballot. And then there's a few states that have let greens be members of the Democrats and the green party. We don't include them in the national database. The, the state party may uh, choose to do that. And blah, blah, blah. There's an application of the definition. And I'm not going to go through all the depth of that other than to say, and people can ask about that later, but part of what my role is here in order to make this database um, accessible for the national party for the long run and not dependent upon me is right now, I'm the person who interprets these criteria um, to determine who, who goes into the database. And I am developing on um, when you go to this summary of green candidates and then who is considered a green candidate office holder by state, I am developing um, a state by state. Oh, no, I was hoping that wasn't going to happen. I am developing a state by state explanation of how this criteria, this little, this little um, go back to that site in a second, sorry, um, of how it applies uh, because we don't want to have to go to me. Uh, God, why, why, why <laughs> did this happen? We don't want to have to go to me to interpret it at all. So anyway, the point is that's in process and it's very complicated. And I'll just give you one example um, here. Like in Arizona, it's a registration um, by party state. If you're a registered green in Arizona, you're included. If you're not a registered green, great. But when you get down to, okay, it's, it's loading slowly. I, I recently learned in Missouri, Missouri is not a registration by party state and the Green Party isn't on the ballot statewide, but the Green Party is on the ballot in St. Louis County, in, in St. Louis City. And in that area, somebody can file to run on the Green Party line even though they're not a member of the Green Party in Missouri. And the Green Party in Missouri says, no, we don't want to have anything to do with that person. Um, so the state law doesn't protect minor parties, and that happens in many places around the country. So um, long and short of it is, is I'm developing the state-by-state um, -state explanation so that uh, it, it's clear on how, how all of this works. So now let's go over. And we're going to have a little bit of fun here. And how does it work when we actually enter a candidate into the database? So here we start out with Danny Jackson. And there's two types of things in the database. There's a candidate homepage, which um, links to all the individual times this person ran. And then there's each of these examples of when they run. Danny Jackson was a green incumbent. He was just reelected. Here you see, this is his homepage from 2022. There's a link to the official results, um, how many votes, the percentage he got, two candidates for one seat to a school board. Um, now, what does this look like on the back end? So here's the back end, and this is what um, people who are ent uh, people who are entering the data, uh, myself, but not exclusively myself, what it looks like. So we start out here on the top and we say Danny uh, runs for school board and the year. And one of the um, minutia is this thing is coded that it only works when you write in runs for school board comma and the year and you capitalize runs. And people who have been learning this or there was a brief period of time when I wasn't in this position and others were trying to do it. And even if you don't, if you don't capitalize the word runs it doesn't show up right. So it's all coded that way. All right, so what happens there is, all right, so you put in that, it develops this URL for that race. So you can go to this site. And then here, this is a pull down menu of all the candidates 
who have ever been in. And we have about, um, I think it's about 37, 3,800 Greens who have run for office over 6,000 times. So um, you, you connect it to Danny Jackson here, and then that's what takes you back to that homepage for Danny Jackson before. So all the races for Danny Jackson are linked by that, um, that pull down menu. Here, we have a real nice calendar uh, based uh, app here to put in the date of the election of when somebody was elected. Here, there's a whole list of the types of races that people run in. Why does this matter? We want to understand, and part of my job between now and 2023 is to be able to develop reports based on how we do in different types of races. In New York State, for example, when the Greens had a ballot status and hopefully they get it back, there, when they run for a, a local city council race, it's partisan. In California, it's nonpartisan. So you can argue that we have an advantage in California that um, Democrats who, who may not vote for a Green in New York might vote for a Green in a nonpartisan race in California. And each state is different, but part of breaking it down that way is so we can generate reports on how we do in all these different types of races. And this needs to be broken down even a little bit further. Um, you get it, you can see here, there are a lot of permutations, even when states have runoff races, are they conditional or mandatory, et cetera. Okay, now uh, Danny has run for school board. So in Maine, the school boards, most of them have this uh, dynamic where where they're known as either a school administrative district or a regional school unit. I've included that whole name there. It's in Waldboro, it's in Lincoln County, et cetera. Then we also include a link to the office holder um, for th that office. Why do we do that? Two things. One, uh, if you want to simply learn when you're going to Danny's um, uh, the, 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 the results page for, the, for this race, uh, one, if people want to know, well, what's the school board about where this guy is, is elected? And then second, if he is in office at this time, then this link is actually going to take you to the place to show Danny Jackson, school board member. Maybe there's a bio about him, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why that's there to, to give you a little bit more information about the, um, the office in, in mind. Here, how pull down menu for how long the term is. And I have to say that um, it's been very difficult for many state parties. They don't, when they report somebody's running, they don't report how long the term is. This creates an extreme amount of work for me to follow up and have to get this information. They also don't report how many candidates are running. They just say, oh, so, so is running for office. And, and that's all they send in. Um, and we can get in a moment to what state parties have to do to make this easier. But but there you go. Now, opposed or not, um, if it's one candidate for one seat, two candidates for two seats, so it goes, um, then there's actually a uh, page that I'll show you later that the database automatically gives us a link to all the unopposed races that um, that we've had. And we've won about 1,300, I think it's 1,346 races in total, 429 of them have been unopposed in our history. So a lot of the times we're winning, we're picking small local races that nobody else is running in. And strategically, that's telling us we ought to be looking for more of those races um, overall. Here, Danny is an incumbent. And this is something that isn't generated. There is not a report generated automatically about our incumbents. So one of the tasks that I have to do for us, because we want to know what is our winning percentage for our incumbents, how well do voters feel Greens do in office? And once we have those numbers, how are we going to publicize that? This is a case where there is an export function of the entire da database. And I'm going to need to export out all of our races ever and then search by incumbents and then generate statistics based on our return um, to office rates or winning percentages based on that. Um, so, but that's a good number for us to know. And especially when we're getting into the higher offices um, where we win school boards, county boards, um, city councils. Um, 
Now, endorsed by the local party and the link to the endorsement, these right now only show on the back end. Um, one of the things that needs to happen here, and I know I'm into the weeds here a little bit, but it's important for you to understand this. We paid a woman named Kendra in Northern California to design this database, but frankly, there was a lot more work than needed to happen than we were able to pay her for, and there were, some things took a little bit longer. So there are some fields that you see here that you don't see on the front end. And this is gonna require David Doonan and I to have some intensive work sessions where he goes into the code and he learns how Kendra made some of these fields seen on the front end, and then he has to adapt the code to see that. Why is this important? Well, first it's important just, hey, if your state party or your local party endorsed you, it's good to know. And if there's a link to that endorsement, great. Uh, then that can be seen publicly. Not every state party or county party endorses candidates. This isn't a demerit if you're not endorsed, but there are even cases where a party wants to disassociate itself from a candidate. And that link to that statement can go there and it can also be here in the comments field publicly. So anytime, and there are some times where I hear from people who say, oh God, please don't list so-and-so. We don't like that person in our state party. That person's an embarrassment. This is a database of all Greens who run so we can have an idea about that. And then we can analyze in subsets there, well, how many of them um, have the support of their parties or not? How many of them are disassociated, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, let's go over here to the right side here now. Now, okay, this person, a couple more things we put in. This is a pull down menu for each state. And as you see, uh, US occupied territories, Guam, Micronesia, et cetera, they're all in there. We have had um, some greens running in the US Virgin Islands in the past. So we put that in. One of the capabilities that has not been um, developed yet, but hopefully we're gonna have a phase four and be able to pay for it someday. I know we're broke at the moment or we're short on funds, but state by state reports so that your state party can actually link to and have embedded in your own state party's homepage all the information for your state is going to come out of this eventually. Um, but, but it hasn't been developed yet, but we still check mark states there. Now, here's a really interesting, I think. <laughs> all right, there are a ton of offices and I'm gonna show you a larger chart here, but when it's time for somebody to run, we have a hierarchy here of all offices starting from US Senate, state legislature, state courts, county offices, um, municipal offices, et cetera. So each person who's entering this information, in this case, the general field was education, local school districts, and then what was that specifically called in this case? In this case, it's called the school board. So we click both category and the individual name. And as I'll show you in a second, we actually group the individual names under large categories and how we do it. So here, Danny was elected. Um, as you see here, there are a couple of different options. There are people sometimes um, who get elected and choose not to serve, a um, whole bunch of stuff. So we, we here he got elected, how many votes, the percentage of the vote, the place of finish, finish, certified. Many states, take a few weeks to count their votes. We put in election aid stuff, but we don't have a final result um, for a few weeks later. Cert certified, here's a link to the local town. Actually, this was not even, this town doesn't even print their results, but I got a local news article here. Now, this race, we picked this one back in 2013. So, so there's a box here that says currently in office. We have a chart um, on another link, which I'll show to you. Everybody who's in currently in office, we check this box. But let's say that Danny ran for re-election. We had the box checked and now we enter his next term. So we would uncheck that box and check the box um, for his new term. And that's one of the ways in which we have a current list of who's in office. Now, it, Here's a new part that, that I have added. We both want to know who's currently in office and we want to know who has been in office at any time in our history so we can accurately look at the trends of how many Greens we've had elected over time. So 
what I've, I've created myself here now is I've added this section here where it says in office starting date, how entered office, in office ending date, how left office. So here, normally what we do is if somebody got elected, we, we click elected um, and we put in the date. So like in, in this term, normally what you do is June 11th, Danny got elected. We'd put in June 11th um, here and I'll explain why I didn't do that here in a moment. And then the end of the term, <coughs> um, three year term, same. Um, so this is when we put in this date for a, a few years from now. And what we do with the dates is you may recall that let's say that you have a November 5th general election for local city council in your town. Um, but they don't get sworn in until December 5th. We use November 5th as the date so that people, so that what the database tells us is as of election day blank, this is the change for us. We're not really interested in when the swearing in dates are and, and, and really couldn't track that anyway. Now, in this case, however, Danny Jackson actually has been in office um, since at least 2007 and probably since 2004. We're still doing a little more research on that. But he only joined the Green Party when he was in office here in April 2012, before he was elected this term. So what we did is we actually put in his starting date as a Green before his 2013 election date, back to this date in which he joined the party. Why did we do that? The way that I'm gonna be developing the chart to show how many people were in office at any time is that I'm gonna be exporting the entire database and looking at the columns of starting dates and ending dates. And we're gonna have a November general election date and a midsummer date and going to see how many greens we had in office and who they were each time as, as of that date. And in this way, we're gonna get Danny Jackson, even though he um, he joined the party while he was in office before. Then the other thing that we do, um, this, this is a local office, so we don't have all this information, but what we try and put in is social media links for each candidate. Um, and then that'll show up again on the front side and we'll go back again to Danny's uh, front side here. This is what it looks back on the front end. Hey, Mike, Remember, Mike, yes. Um, I don't want to stop you, Nisa, but you know, I know it's very detailed that people, you know, you said a lot of, there are fairly new people here and there are some kind of general questions. I can still, I'm collecting them best I can, but I don't know if there's a moment where you want to hear. A, I do, I post. do. So let's, let me go about two more minutes or maybe about just about a minute for a couple of small things and let's do what you're saying, Gloria. And thank you for jumping in. You're welcome. Um, I just wanted to show here the people who run in unopposed races. Uh, that's automatically generated 429 of our opposed race un unopposed races. There you go. So some things come out that way. Um, and then the um, only other thing I want to show you remember before we had that pull down menu for the types of for, for each candidate and how to link back. So here's what this part looks like. Uh, Cheryl McFarland is a green running for Secretary of State in Wisconsin on the back end. So we have a picture of her here but we don't have much information. The Wisconsin Greens have not provided um, any additional information for her yet, other than I know her city, her state, her county. And um, here we have their personal social media. Um, so the party can be in contact them, contact with them that way, um, rather than their, um, their public for each campaign. And then the other thing I'll just say, and then stop and, and go to what you're saying, Gloria, is okay, here. Candidate gender, candidate race, ethnicity. These are on the back end. These are not shown publicly. However, this is something, this is information that we want to know is what is the diversity of our, our candidates who are running? So we've taken, I think the US census categories and expanded them a little bit. Um, you know, here's a, a a, a third option rather than female and, and male, and we can enter in how people choose to um, you know, name themselves here. And then these categories, and it can be more than one. And one of the things that's gonna happen here is that 
once I finish the audit of the 6,000 plus races, uh, and I'm probably through about 4,000 of them right, right now, many of these fields, uh, many of these boxes were not checked in part because we didn't have this information going back in earlier versions of the database. I'm gonna be exporting to every state party um, a spreadsheet of their party's information. And I'm gonna ask them to provide this information because I don't know uh, how um, everybody is um, for all this stuff. I don't know all these people. So uh, and then that's gonna be sent back. And once that's back, we're gonna be able to do a breakdown and um, know as a party, what is the diversity of, of the candidates that we're putting forward? Okay, Gloria, go ahead. Uh, hang on. Okay. Um, so I'll just tell you, I think in a couple of things that uh, kind of group the questions and people are like, well, how do we, you know, can we have this, this video for training? How do we do this? How do we help? How does this all work? And so it, this is a bit more specific in terms of who gets involved in the database and access to it. And I, there may be a changeover that I'm not uh, quite up on. I know Margaret Elizabeth is also kind of collecting some information for people who down the road might want to be helpful, but maybe you can talk about the state, yes. how states get involved and in what they do. Fantastic. Okay. There are a couple of different, um, couple of different ways uh, for that. So first on the home page, there is this submit additions option. And the submit additions is a page that goes into great depth of the types of information that we want on each candidate. And anytime that your state party has somebody to report and you want to make it easy for me and not just say, so-and-so is running for this and that, and that's it. You would go to this page and, um, okay, it hasn't uploaded everything. It's even longer than this. Um, and you would fill that out. So that's number one, the submit additions page easily found right here. The second thing is there are what are called, uh, and sorry, Gloria doesn't like the name, um, database uh, state party agents, state party database agents. And there are a small number of states where I have already trained in and given a password to uh, a state party appointed person for that state. And David um, Bettel from Connecticut is probably the most talented in that, who will enter information for their state. They have a password, they go in, I assign them, I train them on how to do that. Um, we've recorded I think two videos, David Doonan has those training videos. I'm happy to do a session. I've done that with a certain number of states where um, if they will enter their own material, even if partially, it saves me a great deal of time. Um, I haven't done with all the states. Frankly, there's a few states that I do not trust um, to enter the, the information properly because they, um, in their own states, they support non-greens. Um, call and and say they are greens. <laughs> so I've had, since my first responsibility to the national party is to make sure the database um, has only candidates by the our criteria. But, but um, if your state isn't one of the states that has a database agent, um, I am willing to work with you and have your state enter that stuff. Um, but the bigger question, honestly, is compiling the information not entering it. And I will come back to that in a second. Um, but, but really where states are not up to par is actually knowing the information about the candidates and office holders in their own state in a timely manner and then, um, and then choosing to report it. Okay. What else I you got, Gloria? Okay, so that, right. So what you're, in a nutshell, you're saying that one of the most important things people can do in their state to volunteer is to get in there, collect the data about their own candidates, whether it's from the board of elections or their, you know, their own other, their other methods, right? So I have a question yes. from uh, Lou Novak says, what trends do we see over the decades? More candidates, more victories, et cetera. Anything? Yeah. So you can okay. talk about trends at all on, in this session? Yes, yes, we are. And I have a specific chart on that. And um, I will, um, even that's though that's jumping ahead, 
We don't have to. Um, I mean, just I'm just just bring your attention to it. Those are the only other questions, as I said. Okay. Some, well, it was about you know helping what? volunteer, and it was that one. All right. Since I was, I've been in the weeds a lot, uh, simply because. I, I wanted people to understand what they've paid for because the National Committee has paid for this. Um, I'm going to jump out and answer Lou's question and then go back into the weeds a little bit. Um, this chart right here shows our um, even year and odd numbered years totals. And um, you can take a look at it and see that the modern era. Uh, for those of us who have been around forever, was uh, the Nader campaign in 2000. Uh, the Nader campaign in 2000, as you see here, generated new state parties and generated a great enthusiasm of people running for office as Green Party members. So from our early days in the mid 80s, and we first started, uh, as you see, a small number of states were running candidates. It started to increase, increase. The Nader 2000 campaign jumped us up and our golden age was essentially from Nader 2000 um, out the next several election cycles. And you see how many people we used to have running uh, there. We're in free fall right now. We're um, in low numbers and, um, and not only are our numbers going down, but the types of offices that we're winning in, in terms of the, the number of, of office holders we've had, the races that we're winning are smaller um, and less significant. We're not winning in larger cities. We're winning fewer city council seats, um, et cetera. And as you see right now in 2020, that total of 232 was the lowest in the modern era. Going back to 98 before the Nader 2000 campaign, we hadn't been that low this year. We're going to be lucky if we get to the 130 that we had in 98. And you see the number of states running is much lower. And our challenges of getting on the ballot in many states, states where we used to have a lot of candidates because of election law changes or um, other circumstances, Texas, Illinois, New York, California, Minnesota, those were all states that at one time or another had large numbers of candidates running. The numbers are, are way down. Um, so that's where we are this year. And um, kind of similarly, odd number of years, it's a little bit different, but our numbers, um, you know, last year was also a relatively no, a low number for odd numbered years. Now, one of the other things when you, you you do when you look at this stuff is methodology and the fall in our numbers is actually more severe than um you would know for this reason and this goes back to what gloria um, asked about in terms of state parties knowing their information so in many of our important states, not all of them, but many of our important states, those are registration by party states. So Colorado, Arizona, uh, for example, you can be a registered green in those states and run in a municipal nonpartisan race, uh, California, the same thing. And that requires significant research to actually learn are there greens running in those races that are not connected to your state party? And I have been doing a massive amount of labor intensive work, not only for my own state party in California, but I've been doing some of the other states and have been identifying greens in those states. And what we're finding is that I would say 20 to 40% of the races and um, on the high end of our elected officials are only found from this research and our state parties don't know about these people. If a state party is not going to do this work, which is labor intensive, we are leaving green candidates and elected greens, people have chosen to run for office as a green party member, we are leaving them on the table, we aren't claiming the numbers, we aren't getting them involved in our state parties, um, and we are losing them in part because they don't have any contact with our parties. What does that require? What that requires is literally taking your voter registration list that you get from the state 
and sitting down and taking the names of every person who runs in nonpartisan office and compares them to your database. It's labor intensive, but you're finding party members that way. Now, developing that program last year, the state, or the, the, the coordinated campaign committee, which is one of our national committees, had a little bit of money left over and it gave it to the Greens in Maine. Maine is the best success story we have in the country regarding finding greens in those races because Maine has the best um, number of, um, it has the highest registration percentage of most registered greens uh, per capita in the state. And um, it has all these tiny offices, uh, small towns across the state. So it's very easy um, for greens to run often in these small towns and they get elected so what Maine did last year is before they started this process, they only had two people listed as office holders in their entire state. They found more than 40 more Greens who were holding office there. And the reason I say that our past numbers were understated is before uh, there was Nation Builder in California, we didn't have an easy process. We only had hard copies of our voter registration list. We didn't have an easy process to start comparing people. So in the early 2000s, my guess is there were probably another 20, 30, maybe even 40 local office holders in California each year that we didn't know about. And there are other states as well in the past where this hasn't happened. So our year by year numbers now are bolstered by doing some of these searches, but our, our past years are probably understated. The problem here is that this is, a, a, I'm a, I have a very privileged lifestyle and I've been able to do this for a few states, but in Maine, um, we were able to pay some people last year and there are some people willing to do this volunteer work, but they're not able to do it in the manic time sensitive way that I'm hoping. And that's only Maine who's doing the work. Massachusetts, which I believe is probably the next most likely state to have this because they have all those town meeting seats that often have 20, 30 people elected in a small town. And Maine or Massachusetts Greens used to have a lot of town meeting Greens listed. They have not developed the capability yet in Massachusetts to even do this sort of search to see if there are people there. New York State here has tons of school board members um, that they've never searched to see if any um, enrolled Greens in New York State are actually holding office there. My guess is we're leaving a lot of people on the floor there. Oregon, I've done myself. Um, the state party there is saying that they're gonna find somebody. So what I'm getting at here is that your state party, if you are in a registration, that, that's you too, Craig, in, in New Jersey, if you are in a registration by party state, you need to get your voter registration list and you need to compare it to the lists that you get from your county registrars or otherwise to people who are running for office and to find greens who are there and um, and then invite them into your party and, and get them involved. So um, it's minutia work, but we're a political party and, and these are our people and we need to find them and we need to include them. Um, all right, I, I wanna go back into the weeds for a moment on, on, on um, kind of how we're structuring the data, but let's see if there are any questions should, about that. Well, you should make it, it should be just so you know that when you brought up the categories in terms of, you know, male, female, and, and anything that, that, you know, there's a little debate going on. People are asking that it's going to be gender, it's going to be sex, so how are you going to be doing this? So, you, you know, you may want to figure out a way to get some feedback for that or put forward what you're thinking. Is. Yes. Or and you're I, getting and, some and, support from the Lavender Caucus or anyone else who kind of think about Right. And I, and I want to say, when we developed this a couple of years ago, I was in touch with a few Avender Caucus folks. Um, but but yes, um, obviously, this is something that needs to serve the party and the party needs to talk about the categories and, and, and how we do it. And, um, you know, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here to administer. I'm not here to um, necessarily, um, you know, make all those decisions about how, how all that's there. I have posted to the NC list about that from time to time. Let's keep doing it. Lavender Caucus, let's have discussions um, you know, with me to, to make sure we're, we're doing that all as well as we can. And essentially when we send what's in the database out to each of the state parties, um, that's also gonna be a time to give feedback both on um, how people are, are 
already self-defining themselves and how that fits into the structure we have, how it should be uh, evolved further. Okay, now types of offices. Remember before I talked about the types of races that we're in? This is the types of offices. And this was a five and a half week process um, that I went through to do this. Previously, we had a whole lot of, of offices and they were in very, very general categories. And that didn't allow us to categorize and do analysis in the way that uh, we can best do. So this is how it looks on the back end where there, all of these races that people run in. So like some of you are familiar with some states call an office a comptroller, some call them a controller. So each of those is listed. So your candidate can in the pull down menu or, or, or in, the, in that the click box clicks, click the one that they're running for. But also here, what we're doing is we're putting in, these are the states in which it's called controller, comptroller. Here is, it is where it is controller. I'm putting in, in the link, et cetera. This is very time intensive. And obviously there's tons of races. And in some of them, I'm adding in a explanation of what these races do. And um, in the long term, this is going to help people um, understand, again, each type of race people are running for. Here's an interesting thing in here in, in, in New Jersey, a freeholder used to be a name for a county supervisor, but it has racist um, history to it. And in 2020 in, in New Jersey, they got rid of calling it freeholder any longer. And I've included a link there to um, what that is, um, to that history. And one of the reasons it took five and a half weeks is not only was I going through the massive number of types of offices and getting them in the right category, but for this chart to work this way, when you click on each of them, there's actually a, um, here it is. So here's an example. When you, for state house of representatives, which fits in this category of the lower house. These are all the states that has it, but you also have to put in a number here so that it's ordered in, in this large ch chart of you know a couple hundred different types of offices and to make it all work. So where does this get us and why does it matter? All right, so here, this was the back end. This is a front end and this individual page tells us all of the different types of offices that we've run for and have been categorized. Um, and then, you know, if you want to see how many Greens have run for county surveyor, boom, um, you can go here and find that out. Now, why does that matter? Well, maybe you're going to run for county surveyor sometime and you want to take a, li a look at all the different Greens and what they have done, um, et cetera, for that race, how they've done links to their old um, platforms, et cetera. I've posted this chart to the um, national committee asking for feedback. I got one question um, and you know, I've broken it down even like in the education field, there's a difference between state universities, your community college, your local school boards, et cetera. Then there are all these special districts, which are, you know, it's all there. So one, okay, that's nice that we have this page. What this also then does is you see here into this, this has the broad categories. So for example, under city council, all right, you see this, this baby here, oops. City councils are known by different names um, in, in different areas, but all of these are types of city councils in small towns and villages up to bigger cities. And we want to know how many Greens are running for city council overall. So doing it in this way, we both have it broken down to their individual names, but then also for the type of office. Now, let's go back to the question from, from Lou Novak before about what are our trends. What I am developing now is I'm going to be doing a spreadsheet where each of these categories, these are the broad categories of types of races that we're running for, 
the spreadsheet is going to say year 2020, X number of candidates overall, X number of victories overall, and then what is our performance in each of these categories? Now, this is both important for us for a purpose of analysis. So like when we're looking at our trends, maybe we're still running the same number of city council candidates, but we're not running as many for state legislature or whatever it is. So we can kind of track and see. Um, and then how does that affect, how is that related to our ballot access histories in different places? Where are we winning? Where should we run more types of races, et cetera? Previously, the charts I used to do had to be mostly manually. What this is gonna do, now that I've gone through this effort to do this massive categorization, and each of these links is, it's gonna be easy to do a spreadsheet each year for people going forward. Um, I'm gonna do a spreadsheet that will get us through um, 2022 and into 2023. And if I disappeared from the earth, then everybody can still go ahead and use all of these charts going forward. Um, and I'll show you the, the chart that um, we used to have here um, that I would, it, it, was, it was very difficult to do this um, manually. Uh, well, all right, it's not gonna come up fast. Let me, um, let me ask anybody if they have any, oh, and, and part of what I've also done here, since this has taken forever, um, part of what I've done here is, especially in the special districts, I've put in, I've done research in different states for, um, you can do it this way, um, for special districts that aren't even yet included, like a levy district here, um, where Greens haven't even run for yet, but at some point they might. Because if you're somebody from Tennessee and I've given you a password to enter here and your local office isn't entered yet, that might create some problems. So I've gone to great length to put in and research special districts in many different types of states so that the list of people there is more inclusive um, than otherwise. Okay. Michael? Speaking of, yes, go ahead. speaking of taking for forever, uh, yes. you are to end at 345. So you have 15 minutes to go. And there's a specific okay. question that says you Please. have a link for shadow Senate. What can you expand yes. on what that is? Yes. Okay. Great question. Fun question. Um, what we have in, and, and then let's, let's just go to questions now um, going forward. One of the things that we have is in, um, we have, remember we have Washington DC and we have, which is an occupied territory. And in Washington DC, their Senate person is called a, a shadow Senator rather than a US Senator. So I have that as a separate category. In the Virgin Islands, they have a delegate to Congress that isn't a regular Congress member, doesn't have the same voting rights. In Washington, DC, it's called the delegate to US House. In this case, we have an explanation of what that is. And when you go to this um, page that lists all the DC members who run for that, this explanation will come up and explain what that type of office is. DC also has what's called a US representative. So there are certain states where we have uh, these unique type of offices, and this explains them all. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I don't see any of the quite, well, I see people asking things like, should we make the code open source on GitHub? I, I don't want to get into any of those things, but I don't know if that's, if, if uh, somebody wants to ask that directly, but, you know, there's well, a the reason why, a right, there's a reason why there, people are trained and have to sign a non-disclosure agreement in yes. terms of using this, so. May want to go and we've one. paid, this is a WordPress site that has um, modified by somebody who we paid to create something that very specifically works for us, um, for our needs. Let me, um, let me take you then here, these pull down menus, I am further developing this information, but like, let's say somebody says, oh, the green party, you know, you know, locally, you majority on a city council, not true. This link here goes ahead and 
tells us about all of the um, city council majorities that we've had history. And all these different categories um, are, are very helpful. What happened here, Michael? Uh, it appears that Mike I think we lost Mike off of the Zoom. Okay. Oh, no, he's still in the participants list. Um, he's muted. Mike, you're muted. And it looks like his screen share terminated. Yeah. I'm back. I'm okay, back. and so is the screen share. Okay. I'm All back. You see me now? Yes. yes. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, so for example, this page here goes ahead and tells us all the times we've had a green city council majority. I have pictures. I have newspaper articles of that time, who was in office, what the dates are. So this is a tool. There you are, your New Paltz in New York, your, your town council um, or village council majority, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of fun facts that um, are in that I'm doing the geek research in that by 2023, I'll have these lists done. This is another one here, for example, let's say that we want to have, um, we've, we've got somebody who's running this year for US House and we want, and we think, boy, boy they're gonna do really well this year. Um, what in the future, or sorry, what had been in the past are best results for that type of race? So when we're done with this, I'm gonna have for US House, for state Senate, for the lower state, um, what have been our best results in two-way races and in three-way races um, in our history? These are cases where I have to export the spreadsheet out, search and, and, and go ahead and create these reports. But here you see, these are the 17 times where we've had a two-way race versus either a Democrat or a Republican. What has been the percentage, how many votes, percentage of vote, et cetera. These are facts that can then say, yeah, you know, so-and-so this November did, you know, the third best ever that we had in this type of race. So this is, this is a, a chart that doesn't come automatically um, from the um, work, but has to be uh, research that I'm gonna be doing, but it's part of my um, stuff. So uh, these are both places where a lot of that, those fun facts, um, largest city by population, how many years have we had a green in a certain area? One of the tragedies of the Green Party in Minnesota uh, being in bad shape right now is Minnesota has had greens um, in elected office um, the second longest anywhere in our history. And that's documented here. So um, for, for our young greens, um, the chart of, of, of all the greens who have been elected in, in, in young way, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, any other questions? I don't, right, I don't see any other ones. If anybody has a question, you could uh, raise your hand or put it in the chat. I'll take a look. Ma uh, see Margaret, go ahead, Margaret. Oh, excellent. Thank you, uh, Mike. First off, thank you for this great presentation. This is the kind of data that a data nerd like me loves. So awesome, thank you so much. Um, so my question to you is, there's been a, some discussion in the chat about how states can participate in helping with this. Like, what do they need to do to get somebody here? Do they need an agent? Do you, do you train them? Like, what's the process? If you could explain that, please. So I, what I would like to do is if your state party, any of you, identifies somebody who wants to help, I want to meet with them directly because there's both the data entry side in which I can train, but it's also the research side. And each state has different dynamics um, for how you find the information. And, and thus, give me a person, I'll put in the time, we'll do a call, I'll train you in, um, because searching for candidates themselves is very time intensive. And, and let, me, let me add, this, this is a five to a 30 hour a week job right now. My job description in MOU ends, I think it's like 45 days after the SC is elected in 2023. I'm gonna be making, I'm gonna have a, a owner's manual and I'm gonna be making re recommendations. 
but this is not something that happens accurately without massive time commitment. And if I'm gone, um, yeah, <laughs> we really need to, to get something in place for the, it, it's not gonna happen just if the CCC is gonna share a name from time to time. Um, it's, it's very- Okay. I have another question, Mike, when you're ready. I have somebody. Mike, are you on mute? Mike appears to be frozen. Yeah, he's frozen at the moment. I'm, okay. I'm frozen? Okay, well, now you're back, you're back well, now. It was hotter where you are. We have uh, okay. uh, Randy. I'm going to call on Randy Hicks with a question. Okay, so I had a question, and this was an interesting question. Thank you for, for putting this together. It's kind of like the database that we're doing for Tulsa for uh, healthcare for all, because we're trying to set up a database so we can get people I'm interested in a single payer. But my question was, do they self-disclose that they, you know, most of these party races are nonpartisan. They're nonpartisan. City council is nonpartisan. A lot of park commissioner and these are all nonpartisan races. Do they self-disclose to you that they are Green Party uh, candidates? No, so, running? Okay, so, so Randy, just so you understand, um, despite years of my trying to get on the party for individual counterparts to take this on themselves, none of them do. I take in California, and this is what other states that are in registration by party states need to do, and most of you know who you are. I go through every county registrar's list of candidates after the list is final. That's 58 counties, and I go name by name with the registration list of all California Greens. Say weeks. I can compare every single individual person with the green registration list and then I find if there's a match. And then if I find there's a match, I confirm if they're still registered green and there's a variety of tools. And one of the reasons in answering uh, Margaret Elizabeth's question before about uh, who can, you know, what we say, the tools in each day to validate the current green registration is different. And I know these things now. And the list of how the categories apply to each state, I'm including that information. Who um, I kind of break up a little. Mike, you're having, you're having a little uh, bandwidth problems, perhaps, but I'm just letting you know. Um, uh, sorry about that. Anyway, anyway, it's state by state. Um, you know, I need to train people how to do that search state by state, but there's. Thank you. I think we've uh, lost Mike. Um, Back. Oh, you're back. Okay, so you have about five minutes, maybe four, and uh, you, your connection seems to be spotty. So I don't know if there's anything you want to wrap up or a lot been a lot of. Well, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Look, look, yeah. The other thing I'll mention is this: I do part of my job description has me doing periodic reports either to the media committee, the coordinated campaign committee, and the national committee. And I'm consistently doing reports to make sure we have accurate information about our current totals and our trends. And, you know, I'm on top of that. I'm, and, um, that's probably the most visible. Um, Mike, uh, we lost you. You phased out again. Uh, so I think with a couple of minutes left, um, I don't know, uh, Michael O'Neill or, or Tom, my understanding is this is really our last uh, kind of full session and that what's going to be happening at four is kind of uh, for, for states interested in hosting a, an in-person A&M and what that might entail. Mike, could, uh, could be uh, have be part of that discussion. Is that correct? Sorry, Matt, Mike is back. Can you? Not uh, not very well, but we do have to wrap up in two minutes. So I'm just wondering if right. this could be a good time. I mean, all I'm before is that I'm currently 
information reports and accurate information. And um, I need your state parties. Like right now, our numbers are terrible. Uh, what we need is funding. We need to fund source people to do the research because someday I'm going to be here and at my personal privilege with the time that I spend massive amounts of to research. Um, like Colorado, nobody searched in Colorado the last couple of years. We have an office holder in Lafayette, a member, American American guy, great politics. Green or Colorado never knew about the guy, never, never connected with him. But it doesn't mean uh, we got to find a way to fund people who don't have to put in time. And I believe this committee should be a designated fund. And we need a few thousand in it. I know we're broke for other things, but we're a political party. We don't have a office bread time. We did that much. Great. Thank you, Mike, for your presentation and your work. You're welcome. And you in, um, it looks like. Woohoo! <laughs> This is this is uh, Southern California and okay. Happy Bay. Okay. I'm, I'm in. We need to we need to um, just have a, that break time for people who 